A Rolex or other luxury watch brands is intentionally marketed as a status symbol while in reality it has no value in itself. At the very least, a costly shoe or perfume serves some purpose and watches are quite unpleasant. Next to the tie. That's what my friend always says. While I might not entirely agree with him, in this video, I'll discuss five types of watches that I will never buy. First, fashion watches. Let's talk about watches that you might want to avoid. One type to stay away of is fashion watches. Many collectors already know not to go for them because they often don't give you good value for your money. Take brands like Lacoste, Calvin Klein, or designer labels, for example. They may have their names on these watches, but they don't actually make the watches themselves. Instead, they often use basic quartz movements and cheap designs. These watches can cost as little as $5 to $10 to produce, but they sell them for $200 to $300, just because of the brand name. So, don't be tempted by these watches. They're not worth the high prices. Another type of fashion watch is a bit more serious, like Vincero or Filippo Loretti. These are watch brands, but most of the time, they use designs that are readily available and put their own logos on them. They market these watches to young people through social media to make them seem cool. Interestingly, you can find the exact same watches on websites like Alibaba from Chinese vendors for a fraction of the price these brands charge. The profit margins for these brands are huge. Fortunately, these watches aren't as popular with young people as they used to be, but they are still around. If you're looking for a better made watch than something like Filippo Loretti, you have some great options. Consider brands like Timex, an American brand with a long history. There's also Casio, a beloved Japanese brand, as well as Orient, Citizen, and even Seiko. These brands offer much better value for your money compared to these imitator watch brands. Second, vintage watches. Another type of watch that you should be cautious about buying, unless you're well informed, is vintage watches. I must admit, I've fallen into this trap myself because I have a deep affection for vintage timepieces, especially vintage Seiko, Omega and Rolex watches. However, this passion has come at a considerable cost due to something known as a Franken watch. As a watch ages and becomes more valuable, there's a greater temptation for people to tamper with it. They might replace the dial, swap out the hands, or even change the movement or other critical parts. This results in a watch that may look genuine on the surface, but lacks the originality and authenticity that you'd expect from a vintage piece. This can be a significant problem, especially for those who aren't well informed about vintage watches. I'll let my friend talk about his own experience. A few years ago, I was determined to find a Rolex GMT 1675. I had done extensive research, but even with all that knowledge, I wasn't entirely prepared. I traveled from Paris to London to inspect a potential purchase in person, even staying overnight for the occasion. To the naked eye, everything seemed fine, but when I examined the watch closely under good lighting, I discovered a slew of issues. The more expensive the vintage watch, the riskier it becomes for unsuspecting buyers. The journey took me across borders and into the intricate world of vintage watches. Each interaction, a lesson, each disappointment, a step closer to expertise. It became evident that the allure of vintage watches comes with its challenges, requiring not just knowledge, but a discerning eye and a seasoned guide. The vintage watch market, though intricate, rewards those who approach it with a blend of knowledge, patience, and an unwavering love for the craft. A noteworthy incident in the world of vintage watches was the recent scandal involving Omega. A prominent auction house, possibly Christie's, was caught selling a vintage Speedmaster that turned out to be a Franken watch. This revelation was a major scandal, as it highlighted the risk of even reputable companies unknowingly selling watches with altered or non-original parts. So, when it comes to vintage watches, it's crucial to tread carefully and seek expert guidance to avoid such pitfalls. Third, watches that impresses others. Another category of watches that you should exercise caution with is the ones bought solely to impress others. In today's era of social media frenzy, we all get caught up in the desire to flaunt our possessions. However, this desire often leads us down a path where we acquire items not out of genuine necessity or personal desire, but simply to make an impression on others. Unfortunately, this habit can leave us feeling unfulfilled in the long run. It's essential to ask yourself a few questions before succumbing to the allure of buying a watch just for the sake of impressing others. One important question is, if I were to purchase this watch, will I still wear it and derive the same joy from it five years from now? Buying a watch should always be a personal decision because, after all, it's your hard-earned money you're spending. 
Nobody else can dictate what kind of watch you should like or wear, only you have that authority. Remember, the true value of a watch lies not in how it impresses others, but in how it resonates with you personally. So, when considering a timepiece, make sure it's something that genuinely brings you joy and satisfaction, regardless of what others may think or say. After all, it's your wrist, and you should choose a watch that makes you happy. Fourth, a la mode watches. Another category of watches that you should be cautious about are the trendy or in-fashion watches. Just recall the craze from a year or two ago when the Rolex Oyster Perpetual, featuring the popular Tiffany blue color, hit the market. Its retail price was around $5,000 at the time, but it skyrocketed in the secondary market to a jaw-dropping $50,000 to $60,000. This frenzy was purely because it was the fashionable watch of the moment. Do you also remember the Moon Swatch? These watches were originally retailing for less than $300, yet right after their launch, they were being resold for an exorbitant $2,000 to $3,000. It was an absolute craze, and it was all driven by the fact that these watches were considered the hottest fashion items at the time. However, in hindsight, many of the individuals who paid such high prices for the Moon Swatch are likely regretting their decisions. The lesson here is that chasing after the latest trendy watch can often lead to inflated prices and later regrets. Lastly, number five, fake watches. Now, let's discuss the last topic, fake watches. It's crucial to differentiate between buying a homage watch and purchasing a fake one. A homage watch is made by legitimate companies that pay taxes and operate within the bounds of the law. These companies are not associated with international organized crime. Fake watches, on the other hand, are produced by unscrupulous entities. In many countries, owning fake watches is not only unethical, but also illegal, carrying the risk of fines and legal consequences. This holds true in France, for example, as well as in the United States. Fake watches are typically of poor quality, even if they claim to be super clones. While you might think they look just like the real thing and others won't notice, the truth is that you're only fooling yourself. There are often subtle telltale signs that give them away. If you desire a timepiece resembling a Rolex Submariner or any other iconic watch, it's better to opt for a homage watch. There are thousands of homage watches available, and they offer a similar style without violating laws or compromising on quality. Even better, consider buying a watch from a reputable brand with its unique design, which will make you proud to own it. And that concludes this video for today. Thanks for watching until the end. And if you wish to stay updated with the channel, feel free to like and subscribe to Luxury Focus. That's all for now. See you at the next one.